it is very difficult to decide or define what is success well for some people money is success some people designation is success some people location is success some people a combination of all the three may be success it is very difficult to define success which obviously you know better for yourself but in today's video we are going to talk about your successful career in the pharmaceutical industry if you are a msc in organic chemistry now i'm presuming that our audience is either a bachelor's or masters in organic chemistry now first things first chemistry actually is the backbone of the scientific economy of our country let us accept this fact and that too in that organic chemistry definitely 50% of the chemistry growth which is happening in our country in the economy all the industries are based out of organic chemistry so now that means you have plethora of opportunities available for each person but how to become successful in this industry depends on multiple factors so we are going to discuss all those factors in today's video okay now to start with as soon as you pass out you call yourself as a fresher or fresh graduate now that is where the problem begins you think that you are at a disadvantage because you have no experience but the truth is you are at an advantage because now you can do new things what others have never done and this guidance video which i am making today for rasayanika subscribers is going to be a eye opener for all of you now the first thing obviously which will be coming in your mind is gaining experience right how do you gain experience how do you gather experience now there are various ways to gain experience if you straight away apply for a job maybe you will get rejected that's the first if you straight away apply for a big company they will reject you that's the second if you apply for a small startup the chances of getting selected is higher however you can still get rejected instead of doing that you can so the first thing what you can do is apply as an intern look for internship opportunity in various pharma companies and apply there now intern is a no risk hiring for the pharmaceutical company at the same time you are also exploring the waters that how deep is the water correct if you will like the job or not so yes internship now if you are not getting internship which i'm sure that won't happen to you but in case it is not happen you can always reach out to some pharmaceutical company hrs or some scientist and follow the formula which we call it as vast volunteer as a service trick volunteer as a service trick so volunteer as a service means you go and say okay i will not charge anything i just want to assist you because i want to learn new things i'm just a fresh graduate so i want to learn new things so i want to volunteer now if in case you are not getting an internship you can go for the vast formula now once you've got the internship okay you've start, gained some experience but there can be another way of doing that gaining experience and that is government projects now what are these projects we have to find out what are the government number 1 you have so many csir labs across the country national chemical laboratory ncl pune similar to that many csir labs are there where various temporary projects are happening you can apply there as a ra that is a research assistant or a project assistant and work there for some days some months some years and gain experience now once you are gain you have gained experience again you can always come back to the pharmaceutical company and apply but now the question is what kind of relevant experience you require that we will see now now when it comes to gaining experience it is easier said than done because you have to go through that phase it's a process right but if what you have to learn in that process that is skill set right so we call it as skill set now as our prime minister honorable shri narendra modi also says that you have to keep upskilling reskilling cross skilling throughout your life so this never stops but yes for now what you need to learn we will first find out so first will be ts technical skills the second will be interpersonal skills okay or soft skills you can always call it as soft skills now why these two are required 
This will help you get passed through the first round. And this will help you get passed through the final round. So let's talk about the technical skill set first. So the technical skill set which you need to gain while you're still a fresher will be HPLC, JC, NMR and various other techniques are there. Mass spectrophotometry, mass spectroscopy, all this you have to learn, right? Now, these are analytical, analytical chemistry techniques. I have already made a separate video of 10 um, analytical chemistry techniques which you should have. And that video is on Rasainika YouTube channel. Please check that out. Now coming to the soft skills. Under this, there are multiple skills actually. The first will be communication skills. How strongly you can communicate. How nicely you can communicate. You use the right words at the right time. So I'll give you an example. You go into the computer and give a wrong command. It will say bad command file name. The same way humans are also advanced computers. If you use the wrong language, they are not going to give you a job, right? So, right communication skills is required. Next, what do you need? After that, you need to have team working skills. And this you can gain during your internship. How to work as a team. How to handle teamwork. How to lead a team. All this will come handy when you join the pharmaceutical industry. Because there you are going to work as a team. Now, developing this some soft skills like teamwork skills, communication skills is very, very important. Now, the next which you have to learn is project management skills. Now, these things cannot be taught, okay? This can be learned. How? By doing it, by experiencing it in the real world. That is where the internship comes into picture, right? So, project management skills. How do you lead a project? How do you manage a project? How do you make sure that the target is achieved within the deadline? All of that. Because during your interview, they're going to ask you about your team working skills. They are going to ask you about your, how did you achieve your deadline? What did you do? And then of course, this will come in the technical. So all of this you should know. Next thing which I would like to add here is CL, which is continuous learning. It is not that, okay, you have learned all of this and so you are done. Okay, life is set. No, throughout your life, you have to keep learning. If you feel that uh, I have learned enough and now nothing new is happening, then you are not updating your knowledge. You have to keep updating your knowledge because the pharmaceutical industry keeps updating their technology. So let's say, take for example. So at this juncture, the pharmaceutical industry is now involving cheminformatics, bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, machine learning into their work, right? So you have to learn all of this also. Now, next thing which you have to know is the most important aspect of pharmaceutical industry is drug discovery. So you have to in, involve yourself into the drug discovery process in the early phase of your career. Then only you can grow in your career. Another aspect is, suppose you join the industry and work for five years, right? And five years you have worked. But in these five years, if you are getting, say, your salary now has increased after, at the end of five years is 100,000 rupees, okay? That's one lakh rupees, suppose your salary is per month. But if you, instead of doing this five years in the industry, you do five years PhD, the same thing can be starting salary at two lakhs. So it doubles. So consider doing a PhD also if needed. And for that, you can always write CSIR net. And if you want to prepare for CSIR net, you can always come to Rasainika. We always train students for uh, CSIR net also. We also have training for cheminformatics, bioinformatics, artificial intelligence and machine learning and drug discovery. All of this, if you learn, as an organic chemistry graduate, then only you can grow. Now you'll be like, no, I, I am an organic chemistry graduate. Why should I learn uh, bio skills or physics skills? No. See, for the ease of understanding, we call it as physics, chemistry, biology. But the truth is, there is no boundary. Physics, chemistry and biology, all of them are merged together. So it's, you can't say that, okay, only physics I should study or only for chemistry I should study. Everything is combined. That is what science is. That is where interdisciplinary research is happening. For example, you see the drug uh, delivery system. So you, you don't just do drug discovery as an organic chemistry or a chemistry graduate. You can also be involved in the drug delivery system, right? And uh, the uh, analyzing the drug stability study. So there are multiple things you can do as an organic chemistry graduate in the pharmaceutical industry. I hope today's video was insightful for all of you. Uh, let me know in the comment section what new uh, things you would like to learn from me. And uh, I would definitely find out some time to make that for you. Remember, 
challenges will always be there throughout your career. Beginning, because you don't have experience, you will feel challenges more. But actually, challenges will always be there. Just that you will get used to these challenges throughout your career. Initially, it feels like it is tough, but definitely, it's not that tough. If you have the right guidance, right mentorship, definitely you're going to get there. And if you need any kind of career guidance, you can always book a career guidance slot with me. All you have to do is send a mail to shekharatrasainika.com and uh, our team will get in touch with you and they will book a slot with you so, so that we can talk one-to-one -one and I can guide you. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much. Take care.